Hi, my name is Jordi from Cinecam, and I made a brand new short film called Entanglement in collaboration with Adobe. Now, I'm not gonna spoil too much yet, but there's a clone. Now, to pull off a cloning, you need your talent to play the two characters in the same shot, then place those two parts on top of each other and either work with a mask or a rotor brush to bring them together. Now, this is an old trick in the book, so I would like to show you a different cloning technique. In this shot, we have the actor interacting with himself. In reality, it's just me playing as a stunt double. This way, I was able to interact with the actor. Now, the problem is that we need to figure out a way to swap my head with the one from the actor. So after we got this shot, I stayed in place and asked the actor to take the same pose. We can then bring these two shots into Adobe After Effects. First things first, let's track the movement of my head. So hit on the track motion from the tracker window and we're going to select position, rotation and scale. Now look for something on the face that has contrast, like my eyes and the inside of my ear. Now place the two tracking points on it and hit play. Once the tracking is done, we're going to create a new null object and make sure that it's set as the target from the tracker window and then hit apply. Now that null object will now follow the movement of my head and we can use that to link the head of the actor to and make it follow my head movement. But before we can do that we're first gonna have to cut out the actor's head. So let's bring that clip into the comp and I'm going to double click on it to open it in the layer window because from here we can click on the rotor brush tool and paint the head of the talent green. This will make a selection. You can make multiple strokes to fine tune your selection or hold down the alt key to bring up the red brush and remove something from your selection. Now hair is something complex, luckily the rotor brush has a hair tool as well. Click and hold to bring up the refine edge tool. Use this to draw around the hair. You'll notice that the rotor brush effect has been added to the clip. And make sure that version 2.0 is selected. This is the new rotor brush which does an amazing job. As for the quality, I'd like to set it to best. Now simply hit play forward and you'll notice that the mask does a great job following along and it goes super fast. If you do notice that the mask does something wrong, meanwhile, you can always use the rotor brush to adjust. Alright, we are done. We can now press the freeze button down here, which will lock the mask in place. It can take a while, but once that is done, After Effects will actually run super smooth because it's remembering that mask. And if needed, you can always unfreeze, make adjustments, and then freeze it again. Now, some adjustments can still be made after it's freezed, and that is within your rotor brush effect. You'll see some more refinement options for the feather the contrast, etc. So use those tools until the rotoscoping looks good. Alright, now that we have the actor's head, we're going to stabilize it first. This is important because we want to take over the motion from my head. So go back to the tracker window and click on stabilize motion. Make sure that all three properties are selected and like before, we're going to look for a contrast rich point. Start to track forward and when done, hit apply. Now, for the convenience, I'm going to pre-compose the head and move all attributes. We can now go ahead and move rotate scale the head into the right position. Pun intended. Alright, the head sits in place, it's now important to use the pick whip tool to link the head to the tracking null objects. And this way, the actor's head is following my head's movement. There are two last things to do and that is removing the background as we can see my head's coming through a little bit and the neck needs to be blended better. For the background, I'm going to duplicate the body clip and solo the view. Draw a rough mask around the head, invert and feather it. If needed, animate the mask patch to follow the head. Now go over to the content aware fill window and click on generate fill layer. This is automatically going to fill in the gap. Now of course you're always going to get a better result if you've shot an empty plane, but if you forgot to do so, the content aware fill is here to solve your problems. And this brings us to the last tweak. Select the head and draw a mask around the neck, then invert the mask and feather it a little bit, which will blend the neck better with my neck. And if everything went well, you've got yourself two clones that are interacting with each other, which is actually a head replacement. Now, if you're curious about the rest of the story, definitely make sure to watch my short film Entanglement, or maybe you're hungry for more tutorials. Well, in that case, check out the playlist in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.